Hi folks, this is Donald. In this video, I wanted to share with you my approach for trying to tackle a complicated cluttered harbour scene like this with a rusty old boat and lots of clutter and jumble. This is quite a complex one to draw and I thought I would have a go at it, especially because I've never sketched a scene like this before, which is strange because I live on the coast in Scotland and I live right around the corner from the waterfront. So this is Inverary Harbour in Scotland. I've started with a very loose scribbly pencil sketch that I've slightly speeded up and I will be moving between normal speed and speeded up. So it's not one that you can sketch along with, but hopefully you'll get some inspiration and ideas to give it a go. Once the pencil sketch is done, I move into the drawing stage and I decided just to make this a uh, line drawing so that I'm not going to do any colouring in with this. And because I use a solid line drawing style, the first thing I need to do is put in the foreground items and then I'll put in the things behind. So the most foreground thing that you can see is the ropes that are attached to the boat. So those are the first things I draw in to avoid things cutting through them. regular viewers to the channel might notice that I am not using a fountain pen for this drawing. I am using an auto graphic liner and the reason for this is despite the fact that I've been extolling the virtues of fountain pens of late and was becoming a rapid convert to fountain pens, I knew it was too good to be true because the fountain pen that I found that was my sister's and I was thinking this is a brilliant free fountain pen for me. Well, it stopped working. The ink started leaking out and it was going all over the place. I almost ruined a sketch that I was doing at the weekend. I managed to just get it away from the sketch and run to the sink before it went everywhere. It went all over my hands. I did realise then that the pen was faulty. It was too good to be true. Find a free pen. There's a reason why it's lying about and has been dumped in my pen pot. It's because it doesn't work properly. And even before that, I noticed that the line was getting too thick compared to when I started, so I have abandoned that one. I have a new fountain pen on the way, so by next week, normal service should be resumed and all will be well in the world. So you can see I just take my time. I'm studying the scene. I'm trying to find each little detail before I then go in and draw the boat itself. And sometimes it's difficult when you're drawing a scene like this to be able to tell, particularly when you're working from a photograph, it's difficult to tell sometimes what things are. I just make a, my best approximation guess at it. And from there I can draw the top of the boat going down the way. And I appreciate that some people do like to follow along a full length drawing tutorial and then others prefer to watch ones that are more for entertainment and inspiration. So I'm trying to strike the balance between these two things in different videos. I'm drawing in the rudder now. You can't actually see the most pointy part of the boat at the front because the rudder is hiding it. So at the start it doesn't look entirely right because it looks like it's missing the pointy part at the front. I'm sure there's a technical term for that but I'm calling it the pointy part.
I can draw in the propeller blades that are partially hidden behind the rudder. And I should mention as of this week the Urban Sketchy community tab is now open. I will be posting my sketches and lots of other sketchy goodness and I'll be looking for feedback on the channel and video ideas and so on. So I would love to hear your thoughts and come and get involved. All you need to do is look in your subscriptions feed or you can click the community tab on my channel page. YouTube opens up the community tab once you reach 500 subscribers, which we have now passed. And I just want to say thank you so much for everyone who has subscribed so far and left such nice comments and feedback and got involved. I'm incredibly grateful and surprised that so many people are here and watching these videos. When I started all of this, I really wasn't convinced that anyone would have any interest in what I have to say about any of this arts business, or never mind watching me actually do art. So I'm delighted that you're here and thank you so much for being a part of it. If you ever do have a go at sketching any of my sketches that I do in real time and you try to sketch along or anything that's inspired by what you're seeing on this channel, do let me know and I will be more than happy to post your sketches on the community tab for everyone to see and we can all try and share and make an encouraging positive place because making art is hard and I appreciate that and I'm still learning all the time how to do it. I'm trying to push myself and getting better at drawing and that's partly why I decided for this sketch just to only draw the line drawing and really spend the time concentrating on that and not have to think about doing colouring afterwards. Now you've got the sense of how I was drawing in real time, I'm going to speed up a bit. And I made a little mistake at the bottom where I drew a line under the rudder when it should have gone straight through. But as I always say with mistakes, if you do make them, don't worry about it. Don't stop drawing. Don't give up. Just keep going. There's always a way to fix mistakes. And if you can't fix them, I just live with them anyway. I don't really care that much. It's not that important. It's just lines on a page. But you will see that the mistake that I did make at the bottom, it disappears in the final drawing because I found a way to mask it. And so you don't even notice it's there. No one would be any the wiser unless you pointed it out. So I'm building up the interior part of the boat now, the little cabin and there's lots and lots of cluttered detail and the process entirely throughout this is just looking at the scene and trying to work out what goes in front of what. And I know that sounds very simplistic but that's just the way I like to think about things. For me it's not about following rules, it's just about drawing what I can see and for example the big pole that's coming up from the back of the boat, you have to draw that in first before you draw the line that goes behind, otherwise the line would be cutting through the pole. And by this stage I was starting to think, you know what, this is actually looking like a boat. Considering I've never drawn a boat or any kind of harbour scene before, I thought this is turning out alright. And it's always funny that when you surprise yourself by managing to actually be able to draw something. Now with the lines that are coming down from the big tall pole, I did make a mistake because the wires on the left side of the pole should have been coming across to land on the left edge of the boat. And so I should have drawn those in first and then draw the things in behind. But again, someone is only going to know that if you point it out. It's not something you would really notice otherwise. So I'm then drawing in the harbour wall that is behind. And then there is some fencing and 
I had to eventually move that yellow strap to stop it getting in the way. That let me get right to the edge of the page. And I always do like to draw right to the edge of the page. I don't know why I've always done that, but that's just the way I do it. I then put in the brickwork of the harbour wall and that gives it a bit more solidity. And ordinarily, if I was doing this in my normal colouring in style, I would be getting out the grey India ink marker pens and colouring them all in different shades. And even though you don't get the contrast that you would if you were colouring it in, I still think it works. I really like the way it looks. There's lots of detail to get lost in and you really have to go in close to see all the little boxes and wires and everything else that's in there that you have to really look closely at to find. And I like that and it's quite appealing to just sit down with a piece of paper and a pen and just draw and not have to think about paints or colouring pens or anything like that. And if you were sketching out on location, how much better would it be if you only had to bring a sketchbook and a pen? So then I did lots and lots of rust squiggles and you can see at the bottom I created a water effect even though the picture doesn't have water I thought that would look quite good and that mistake that I made below the rudder blade is no longer visible because I turned all of that into gravel where the water is lapping up as the tide comes in. And I did find this difficult. I know it might look easy when it's all speeded up and you're just speeding along drawing but there was an awful lot of complexity and a couple of times I did get a little bit lost even though it might not look it. But I just kept persisting and I think that's always important in sketching because in the end it turned out pretty well and it gives me encouragement to maybe keep drawing like this and seeing if I could tackle much more complicated scenes than I would typically try to draw. I always like to challenge myself. It's how you get better. It's how you keep moving forward and become a better sketcher and artist. And if you'd like to see more sketching inspiration like this, you can click on this video right here and I will see you in the next one.